Hello, beautiful people. Thanks for joining, coming to my channel. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching. Apologies for the eye. It still hasn't healed. And today I am wearing eyeliner and actually lip gloss for you. <laughs> so anyways, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And I want to give you guys a special thanks for the super thanks and especially the PayPal donations thing makes up. It really is helping the school out. So thank you very much for the PayPal donations. And anyways, let's let's talk about a little bit about a lot. Yeah, let's talk about a lot. What are Harry and Meghan Markle's biggest lies to date that are actually criminal? Please let me know what you think because this is why it matters. The correct procedure to do when, a, when you have a civil lawsuit, let's say Amber Heard, she, it was determined that she lost that civil lawsuit, right? That she lied, she committed perjury, they didn't believe her. The correct thing would have been for the police to grab her and question her and say, excuse me, Ms. Heard, uh, there are some questions that we need answered because if you lied under oath, that is perjury. And I have had very many people say, when it comes to Meghan Markle and Harry, oh, you know, the reason why, when you criticize her about the miscarriage or whatever abuse that she claims to have had, then it makes it harder for others who actually uh, to come forward. That is the big problem I have, that these women, these two fraudsters are lying. And they are making it harder for us women or for the rest of the women to really, who are really going through abuse to come forth. Because these high profile people, because they have such a big platform, thanks to who they marry, they abuse it and they claim false crimes and they get away with it, unaccountable. I don't understand why Amber Heard was dancing in El Salvador uh, with this guy, not a care in the world, after she was found that she lied under oath because they didn't believe her testimony. They didn't believe it. And the pol police didn't prosecute her. And Johnny Depp let her get out scot-free. I actually do criticize Johnny Depp for that because he should have made her pay for that every cent she got. Not because he was spiteful or anything, but to hold her accountable. Because she thinks that she got away with it. And she has, just like Meghan Markle. I know that many people are talking about a lot of us are talking about the judge's reaction to Harry's changing, ever-changing testimony. Harry's phone hacking testimony contained troubling factual inconsistencies, hacking judge says. Um, yes, they are called lies. It's called perjury. Every time somebody submits a witness statement signed, it's under the threat of perjury. So first he submitted, he actually the whole thing initiated because he said he, he wasn't aware of any lawsuits or anything like that. And he wasn't aware of anything. Poor little ginger boy. You know, wanking Harry. Harry the weasel. I swear to God, there's so many names that you can come for this guy. But now he's changed his mind. Now he's saying that it was the royal family again who stopped him from exercising his legal right of suing because that's basically what he's saying now if William was able to sue and he got a settlement why can't I they told me to wait no apparently he was offered about 200,000 pounds because his phone was hacked only nine times granted shouldn't have been hacked at all but it was so nine times he got 200,000 pounds which he turned down now William what they failed to say because they want to cause remember what we talk about abusive people they want to cause maximum damage so he goes on and on and on talking about it, you know, like how terrible it was, how he, now he's changed it. And the judge, instead of cautioning him and saying, you committed perjury, you better rectify the situation. The judge calls it troubling, inconsistent, factual inconsistencies. Those are called lies. That's called perjury. It's like, it's like here, a high court judge questioned factual inconsist inconsistencies. That would be called lies. Again, I repeat myself. 
In Prince Harry's explosive witness statement yesterday in his latest battle with the British press, the Duke of Sussex claimed for the first time on Tuesday that a secret agreement between the royal family and news executives stopped him bringing his phone hacking claims earlier. So basically, the royal family made me do it or stopped me from doing it. They're all guilty. But the judge, of course, Fan Fancourt, said this new evidence was troubling him. Send him to jail. It seems that perjury runs in the Meghan Markle family because now Harry is Harry Markle. Of course, rightly so, news groups saying that he's full of shit, basically. They argue that Harry was at the epicenter of the scandal and argue it is fanciful for him to suggest he did not have any knowledge of phone hacking before he brought his action in 2019. Also, I call out the, the, the lawyers for the newspaper. They should be calling Harry calling him out for perjury because they should be presenting both witness statement, the original and now the amended one, a whole new one, and say which one is true. Because if he lied and either of them, he's committing perjury. And on those basis, we ask the lawsuit to be dismissed and him to be brought on charges of perjury. I mean, Harry is such an idiot. Harry is such an idiot that he submitted a 31 page statement because in his mind, oh, talk about William, talk about the settlement that William got. So if he knew about a settlement, he knew about the lawsuit. So why isn't the judge cautioning him for perjury and calling him to action and say, you're wasting the, the court's time. You're going to pay for everybody's expense. This case is going to be dismissed and we're going to investigate you for perjury. That's pretty much what they have to do. But the lawyers also for the newspapers are not saying anything. Because let's not forget Megan when she committed perjury. And this is why we talk about a lot. When she apologized to the court for forgetting biography briefing notes when she was caught with her skanky pants down and exposed by Jason Knopf. Instead of her being cautioned and, and tried for perjury, oh, the Duchess misremembered. Those are called lies. And I'm gonna get to the point that I wanna get with all of this as to why where Megan's, what is Megan's greatest weapon for real? Now, one of those um, certificates or one of those documents has a doctor's signature, the time and everything that witnessed the birth of Louis, who now is called Prince Louis. And the other one is Archie's. You notice the big difference? Both were put, th these are the easels outside of Buckingham Palace announcing the birth of, you know, the kids. The reason why I'm using Louis is because I have used in the past, uh, in the past, Prince William's, Harry's, um, and all the other royal children. And people say, oh, well, that's outdated. Prince Louis, I mean, Archie supposedly was born pretty much a year later. So they're both around the same time. That is... The, the, the one in, where it has all the signatures is how it's supposed to be in order for a child to be part of the line of succession. Those documents have to be made public with the signatures of the doctors who witnessed or delivered the child. Now, a lot of people say that Harry and Meghan Markle are going to bring the destruction of the monarchy. A lot of you say, oh, the monarchy has lasted a thousand, time, a thousand years, so of course he's going to survive Harry and Meghan Markle. The reason why the monarchy was able to, to exist, let me first begin with the following. There's a saying in Spanish, no hay, no hay mal que dure cien años ni cuerpo que lo resista. Um, no ailment lasts 100 years and nobody can, can suffer through it. There comes a breaking point. And the monarchy is at a breaking point right now, and I'll tell you why. Before, there was no internet. There's two things that are going to bring down the monarchy, the lack of accountability and internet. Before, you know, you needed the printed press and, you know, you needed to send the newspapers across the ocean either by plane or, you know, there was no internet, no, nor 24 hour news cycle. Like CNN pretty much brought that there. You had to wait for the evening news, you know, unless there was a sudden announcement that something had happened, you get it on the radio or maybe breaking news on the TV, but it had to be something really weird. But now, you do something or it, something is found out and it's instantly, it literally, the send button, you know when you send, 
is going to be is the destruction of the monarchy because they no longer have control on how, where, and when, and who distributes any news. They they don't. Everything it goes it gets spread so fast. They don't have time to do damage control. And the lack of accountability and the lack of transparency from the royal family. The reason why I presented the birth certificate of Art, not the birth certificate, but the announcement of Louis and Archie is for you to see the difference. One meets the legal requirements for the child to be included in the line of succession and the other one doesn't. The big scandal is gonna be if it gets found out that Meghan indeed had a surrogate because that would mean that the royal family and parliament were complicit. The royal griff mentioned that what I've been saying pretty much, that the only reason why Harry and Meghan Markle are getting away with everything is because they are allowed to get away with it. Make no mistake because Meghan Markle right now is negotiating the birthday special for Archie to be released on May 6th to compete with, with King. And don't discount Meghan not coming to the coronation or the UK. Because you see, Harry has to be, there's almost a 12 hour flight from LA to the UK. So let's say Harry comes to the coronation. Then he leaves, you know, like around two in the afternoon or wherever he goes, if he goes by private plane, which I'm sure he will. Takes about 12 hours to get there. He won't be there on time to have Archie's birthday, right? And then he has to fly back to be in court in the United Kingdom because he has to be in court. So the most normal thing would be for Meghan Markle to accompany Harry to the UK, even if she doesn't attend the coronation, and have a birthday bash for Archie there, and release the pictures there. Because then it's gonna, she's gonna steal um, Charles Thunder. You, you make no mistake that we will, I, I really, it's my very firm opinion that Meghan Markle might still show up at the, at the coronation because what are they gonna do? Are they gonna turn her away and say, oops, sorry. Now, why is Charles inviting the vice president of China to a British coronation when the coronation is for the British people? He's inviting the vice president of China, foreign dignitaries. I mean, why is he doing that? And leaving British people, his British, British subjects out because he's politicizing his own, his, his, basically he's using the coronation, the anointing, because the coronation is just the anointing by the Church of England. And on top of that, he wants to include other faiths. So this is what's gonna be the downfall of the monarchy. Not Meghan Markle. Meghan Markle's actions are irrelevant. It's the fact that there are no, uh, uh, no accountability, there are no consequences to those actions. Here he's right now literally committing perjury. And this is actually real because when you submit a signed statement that is under oath and you actually have to sit down and write it, think about it, your lawyers go over it. And basically the lawyers allowed him to lie, to commit perjury. So, and the biggest, the biggest, the biggest con in my very personal opinion are those children because you see those children have to have to be the the, the the most specific rule the most important part for for any royal to be in the line of succession is that the child is lawfully begotten which means that the child has to come has to be born out of the woman's body and the documentation with the test of, with the witness who delivered the child has to be made public it is not always protocol, it is a law. Those documents have to be public. And if the, if the parents don't wanna do it, then they have to take the child out of the line of succession because their public is entitled to that. Unless, of course, Meghan Markle from the beginning knew that she wasn't gonna stick around, so she didn't want those documents made public because she wasn't sticking around, hence the royal family knew about it, and hence they haven't pushed the thing. What I'm trying to get at here is that the royals are going to be the downfall of the monarchy, the current royals, at least some of them. We have Camilla inviting her ex-husband to the coronation while they're leaving out Lady Pamela Hicks. Can somebody please tell me why is Camilla's ex-husband in, invited to the coronation? A man 
who allowed adultery to happen. And he was an adulterous person as well. These are the principles that are guiding right now the current monarchy. And what is worse is that parliament is failing the United Kingdom. And anybody who calls them out is trashed, booed, oh, you hate the monarchy. No, I love the monarchy. It's like if I tell you, if, do you like democracy? When you see your, 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 your president or whoever acting in a way that's anti-democratic, you go, wait a minute, censoring? It's anti-democratic. There has to be a healthy free press, freedom of expression, which is here, what Harry calls bonkers. But what do you think is going to be the downfall of the monarchy? What do you think it would happen? Or do you think it will ever come to light, even if they know that Meghan didn't deliver those children, which is why they don't make those documents out and available? When things are right, they are transparent. When things are not right, there's a huge lack of transparency. There's uh, blame shifting, you know, shifting blame, throwing anger. They get aggressive because, of course, the best thing for a gaslighter is to be angry, is to be aggressive. So what do you think is going to be the downfall? Do you think Lily and Archie are going to be the downfall of the monarchy? Not because if they exist or not, but because if they do exist and if they were born by surrogates, the family, the royal family failed along with the UK Parliament to really follow it through and ensure that the, those children were law, they met all the legal requirements. And what is worse, I'm sure when they found, if they found out, they covered it. Because they much rather cover their own asses of their own rather than be transparent and say, no, we're not going to include these children in the line of succession. We're not. And I don't understand why Charles is not being forced to invite the British peers because the coronation is to be witnessed by the British public. There's only 24 dukes in the United Kingdom and none of, I think only a few of them have been invited because they're making room for the vice president of China, the leader of Sinn Féin, Sinn Féin, I don't know, the IRA, who killed Lord Mountbatten. Monarchs from abroad, vice presidents, presidents, why? This is for the British people, but Charles, is making, I mean, maybe the Commonwealth, I understand the Commonwealth, but countries that are not part of the Commonwealth, why? Because it's all about Charles, and this is what the problem we have. And you know, he, you know there's a saying, there's something in the Bible that says, that, that the person without a sin, you know, can cast the first stone. Charles can't cast any stones. He's got so many sins, we all do, but his are, and he's the head of the Church of England. This is why Harry, people like Harry and Meghan Markle can make the demands and are not held accountable. Please let me know what you think and what do you think will be the downfall of the monarchy? Do you think, you know, people are very arrogant that think. You know when, why Jeffrey Epstein, Harvey Weinstein, and all those people were able to get away with everything they were getting away with? Because there was no internet. Now somebody like me can go on the internet and post something and it becomes global within no time. So what do you guys think?